I shall always be grateful to Winston and to his old friend and mine, the late Lord Beaverbrook, for the support they gave me when the issue of my abdication was before the British people. One of the privileges of being a Britisher in the 20th century is having had the privilege of sharing that century with Sir Winston Churchill. There are others who have known him more intimately than I have. But our association did begin more than 50 years ago. That is quite a long time back. And I have made a few notes to remind me of the early days of that association. If you talk about the early days, sir, what was one of your earliest recollections of Sir Winston? One of my earliest recollections of Winston was character characteristically a surprising one. Then, a very young cabinet minister. He was my father's guest at Balmoral Castle, some years before the First World War. One morning, the king asked me to go to Winston and ask him if he would like to go out deer stalking. On entering his room, I was taken aback to find him still in bed, the covers of which were littered with state papers. It was then 10 o'clock, and the rest of the house party had been up and around for quite a while. Winston must have sensed the surprise on my face, for he said, don't get the wrong impression. I have been working at these papers since the first light. Then on telling him that the purpose of my call was to carry the king's invitation to go deer stalking, he sprang from the bed like an arrow from the bow, state papers flying, and was soon headed for the hill. When Sir Winston was home secretary, I believe he had certain difficulties with all your titles at Carnarvon. Yes, Winston also played a part at my investiture as Prince of Wales at Carnarvon. He was called upon as Secretary of State for Home Affairs to proclaim my names and titles from the ancient battlements of the castle. This was, by no, this was no mean feat of memory, and Winston told me afterwards that he had rehearsed the jaw-breaking list of my royal styles and appellations between shots on the golf course. Can I bring you now, sir, to the somber days of the First World War? What association did you have with Sir Winston then? Just before the First World War, an event which was to reveal for the first time the wonderful qualities of foresight, daring and resolution, which were to give him an, give an heroic meaning to his later life. It was July 1914. The war clouds were gathering. Winston, by now, first Lord of the Admiralty, had mobilized the British home fleet under the guise of naval maneuvers. My father and I embarked aboard the Royal Yacht at Portsmouth and reviewed this mighty battle line of dreadnoughts cruisers, and all the rest at Spithead. On the final day of this great fleet assembly, my father, with Winston on the bridge, watched the warships steam away to their stations in secrecy in defense of the British Isles. Was Sir Winston a great help during the obviously difficult days of the period of your abdication? For myself, I shall always be grateful to Winston and to his old friend and mine, the late Lord Beaverbrook, for the support they gave me when the issue of my abdication was before the British people. Oh, sir, I'm sure that you would like to wish a friend of so many years a personal birthday message. Yes, and now as this great man enters upon his ninth decade, I would like to look upon this occasion as a cheerful landmark in the ever-unfolding lives of Winston Churchill.